In this video, we'll see how to convert the event day application into an offline application. First, let's see how the application currently works. It's still an online application. We're going to access the application and the web application. We're going to have both interfaces open to see how the interaction takes place. In the web app, we'll access the speaker's work with component. We'll select one, for example, Armin, and edit the user details. We'll add a letter at the end of the name. And we'll save. Now we open the SD app and refresh. The change is automatically displayed. What happens if we edit it from the device? Let's change that last letter that we added and then save. We'll refresh the web panel and we automatically see the change. This is because the application works in a connected way. But what happens if I disconnect the app? Let's simulate this. We'll turn off the Wi-Fi and data. Now the emulator has no internet connection, so it cannot access the REST services layer. If we try to add Armin again, we'll be able to do it because this data is cached. However, if I try to edit his details, an error occurs. Let's try to access another speaker we didn't open before. And note that we can't because we have no connection. We can't even access the list of restaurants. When we're offline in an online application, we only have access to data that's cached in the application, but we cannot access new screens. Okay, now we go to Genexus to convert the app into an offline app. What we'll do is open the event day object, which is the main object of the app. In the properties, we set the connectivity support property to offline. We'll save and build the app. One of the things we'll see next is an impact analysis of the offline database. These will be the tables that will be taken and created in the device. We'll see what they are and how they're determined. Note that now we have a new object, Event Day Offline Database, which is associated with the Event Day object. This object will allow us to configure certain aspects related to the offline database, which will be generated in the device, such as granularity. Then we'll study these properties in more detail. In addition, this object has events, rules, conditions, and variables. Later on, we'll see how they're used, but for now, we'll leave the default settings. Okay, we already have the application in the emulator. Note that now when the application started, we can see in the status bar that the synchronization is running. The panel will also indicate this process. Once the process is finished, we'll be able to use the application normally. For example, if we access the speakers, we'll see the list. Let's disconnect the device. Now we'll try to access restaurants, and we don't have the problem we had before because the data is stored on the device. I can even edit a record. Let's add another star, and save. The user won't notice any differences. We'll edit a speaker. So we go to speakers and select Armin again. We'll remove the letter we added before to his name and save. 
Note that now we have no problem being offline. The data is always recorded on the device. And if we go to the web interface and refresh, we won't see that change, because the device is offline. Let's reconnect the emulator to the network. To force the synchronization, let's close, and then open the application again. The reason is, we haven't configured the offline database object. And in this way, we don't need to wait. We open the application again. This runs the synchronization. And now we go to the web, and we'll update. And there we see the change. We finished here this basic demo, where we saw how simple and easy it is to create an offline application with Genexus. In addition, we've seen the process of synchronizing the data between the device working offline and the web server, and the CRUD operations that will always be performed on the local database. We'll go back to the presentation. As we've just seen in the demo, when we indicated that the main object was offline and executed the build operation, an offline database object associated with the main object was automatically generated. We've also seen an impact analysis, which is similar to when we select to create the database. However, the tables displayed here are the tables that the Genexus analysis has determined that it will take to the SQLite database on the device. When the offline database is created, the programs to create this local database are also created in the device's native language. This object is responsible for determining when the synchronization is run, which tables will be created in the local database, and which data is sent to them when they're synchronized with the server tables. Also, the offline database object is where the properties we've seen for send and receive are configured. So, what tables are effectively sent when an application is set to offline? Suppose that we have this tree call from the main object. We can have objects with the connectivity support property set to offline, such as the main object. There may be others with the default value, which is inherit. They inherit the type according to that object calling them, and others that may be online. If we have this invocation tree, the tables that will be sent to the device are those of the offline objects, and those that inherit the offline connectivity of the caller object. In addition, referential integrity and the attributes mentioned, both in panels and in prompts, will be taken into account. This object that's online and calls this other one that inherits the type of connection will not be included. They'll be online. And in this case, all the tables will be taken except for user device and devices, which are the tables that we haven't used from the application just yet. This is the end of the topic. In the next video, we'll see more details about the synchronization and properties of the offline database object.